Good morning, Facebook world. It is Sunday, April the 26th, and we are here this morning again, uh, coming to you live from my office uh, in Andover at my home, and trust you guys are having a great day. When you guys uh, come on, if you just want to say hello, I'd love to greet you uh, this morning. If you want to put a comment in the comment section, uh, that'll be great. Uh, we're going to be looking at the biblical prophecy okay we're going to be studying biblical prophecy good morning ted good to see you brother um god bless you thanks for tuning in this morning um and today we're going to be looking at the credibility of biblical prophecy but i just want to share this as folks are coming on um because i, I think this is pretty interesting um under the tab for uh, Facebook, you can do a tab for what you're going to talk about or a comment or whatever. And I tried uh, three or four times before I just had to erase the tab because it would not let me put the words in biblical prophecy or a study on biblical prophecy. Uh, it kept throwing me off for censorship type related issues. So I had to delete the whole tab for me to be able to come on here this morning. Uh, so, But we can certainly talk about it. And we're looking at the credibility of biblical prophecy. Um, I can tell you that uh, there are many um, things that are unfolding all around us. Uh, good morning, Dawson. Good to see you. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Barbara. I saw a few others that popped up very fast there. Good morning, Brandy. A lot of folks just came on, so it's almost impossible for me to catch all those uh, bubbles and messages. Um but good morning to everyone. But we are uh, realizing as we see things unfold uh, in America and around the world that actually what's unfolding is is biblical prophecy. And the fact that I, I couldn't even put those words um, in the, the sub uh, category or the description box um, without uh, being censored and, and would not let me go on, uh, I find that to be interesting. Um, but we can still certainly... Study the word of God. Good morning, honey. My wife is watching. That's good. Um, but and as we look at scripture, we can look at what we see going on around us and prayerfully connect the dots. So I'm going to try to uh, help us to be able to do that uh, here today. Last week, we looked at uh, the rebirth of Israel. You cannot have any biblical prophecy without the rebirth of Israel. OK, and so the, the nation of Israel is coming alive. We talked about where their economy is taking off. We talked about how they were reborn in 1948. Um, we talked about how Jerusalem is the epicenter of the world. And we talked about Israel goes, so goes the world. Okay, very important, very significant that we understand that concept. Um, if not, you're always going to be asked that question. Well, we've heard this for 2,000 years. How do we know now uh, it's different? And so good morning, Carolyn, to you. Um, and so we know it's different because... Um, Israel has been reborn. A new season is upon us uh, in 1948. Matter of fact, their birthday is coming up uh, the first week of May. Okay, so May 8th, 1948 uh, was their uh, second birth, if you will, which is what God had promised. And today we're going to talk more about that. And what I'm trying to do, guys, is build the credibility of God's prophetic word. Okay, and and I just took a few, I took a few notes here. And credibility means worthy of belief. Okay, to where as I teach and as I build the credibility of God's word, and as we compare it to what's going on around us uh, in the world, hopefully it's building your your worth, so to speak. Hopefully you're believing God's word and understanding that these are the signs of the times as they're unfolding around us. I mean, you you cannot make this stuff up, okay? What we see happening and how it just goes so uh, clear uh, with, um, with God and his word, okay? And so if you have your Bible, uh, let's open up to Ezekiel 37, and we're going to pick up at verse 21. Ezekiel 37, uh, verse uh, 21 and we're going to continue to build credibility. We're going to continue to build uh, a worthiness that brings forth a sense of belief, okay? And and if you have questions, guys, out there, just post your question in the comment section. I will certainly try to catch it live. If not, I will respond to it 
um, later on today after our service. Um, but if it's a question I see and I can respond to it, I certainly will. Uh, or maybe you have a question about uh, either something we talk about or something that you see uh, going on in the world today. And maybe you're, you're wondering if it pertains to biblical prophecy or setting the precedent to fulfill biblical prophecy referring to the tribulation era because all prophecy has been fulfilled that leading up to the rapture of the church okay there's nothing else we're waiting for uh so you want to keep that you want to keep that in mind and hopefully that will help you uh to be looking up for our redemption our redeemer jesus christ is drawing nigh and the train that he is that he is engineering is is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle so we certainly want to be ready uh, for that. All right. So Ezekiel uh, 30, uh, 37, 21 to 23. This is where God begins to gather his his children from all over the world where they have been scattered uh, during the 2800 years of oppression and captivity. OK. And so since 1948, Israel's population has been skyrocketing. Uh, it is now still, of course, the size of New Jersey as far as geog geographically speaking. Um, and, and it's, and it's, um, topography. However, the population is constantly increasing. Uh, it's almost 10 uh, million people living in Jerusalem. And it's estimated that between 13 and 15 many, million people will be living in Israel, um, by the year 2030. Okay. So that's just 10 years away. So the population is skyrocketing. But I just want to read with you in scripture where the prophet is equal is told by God exactly how this would happen. Okay, and the fact that they would scatter, of course, they scattered from the Babylonian captivity through World War II and how the land was desolate, which we talked about. Now God's going to restore the land, which we talked about also last week, and now he's bringing his children home. This is huge, okay, because just a, just a generation ago, Israel was desolate with very little people living in it. Now it's got 10 million people and, and the population is growing uh, constantly as the economy is booming, uh, in the Holy Land. Okay. So Ezekiel 37, 21, then say to them, thus says the Lord God, surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they had gone and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. One King shall be King over them all. And they shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they be ever divided into kingdoms, two kingdoms again. They shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people and I will be their God. All right. And so what's God saying here? If you remember when, when Israel fell apart was during the divided years, after Solomon died, okay, the northern kingdom, southern kingdom, Israel, and Judah, okay, and then they went into uh, control of Assyria, then the Babylonians, then the Persians and Medes, then the Greeks, then the Romans, then Europeans, then Muslim nations, then back to European nations for 2,100 years through World War II, okay, and so God has healed God has healed their uh, their land, restored their land. He's given them a, a kingdom again with, with a leader, one leader. Of course, they're a democracy today. They have a parliament, uh, which means they have a president and a prime minister. Uh, and so Israel has free elections. Uh, they have the third fastest growing economy in the world. Uh, they've, they've, they found oil in 2001 off the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, the economy is, is, is booming. Okay. It's amazing what's happening. Apartment buildings are rising. Uh, businesses are opening. Uh, and so tourism is just off the chart. Uh, and certainly Jerusalem, as we talked about last week, is again the capital of Israel. And it's a divided capital because the Palestinians have the southern part along the Gaza Strip. But it's, it's, it's just amazing what's taking place. But today, one of the things, as I build your credibility, and I pray God's actually building your credibility. I'm just facilitating. But as we build our credibility that God's word can be believed and that these are the signs of the times, what is extremely significant is that God told his equal that after the captivity, he was going to restore the land and then bring people back to the land, to their own land, including Jews from the United States that are returning to uh, the Holy Land. And we see this 
happening uh, time and time again. Okay, and so, but notice here, God's doing some other things. One of the things that the Israel, the Jewish people, the Israelis did under the leadership of even President Harry Truman here in the States after the war was that they repented for the sins of their fathers. Okay, they repented for the sins of their fathers. Okay, which was centered around idolatry. Okay, and practicing and worshiping false gods, which started back with Solomon and it carried through 2,800 years. And so they repented of that sin and then they began to practice Judaism uh, that was centered around, of course, the Old Testament, which many of the Jews still practice. But we also see in, with the Messianic Jews that many Jews in the Holy Land are coming to Christ. Okay, they are believing that Jesus was the promised Messiah of the prophet Isaiah and that he is the savior of the world. Okay, and so Jews are coming to Christ even as we speak uh, in the Holy Land. Okay, so and that is happening through repentance and God cleansing uh, his nation from the sin of idolatry. Okay, which is so important. Uh, people ask me, uh, people ask me all the time, why, why did God allow such an evil person, uh, Adolf Hitler, to come to power and, and, and put all these Jews, put all of his children or half of his children in ovens and cook them uh, during the Holocaust? Well, God permitted that because he had to wake his people up. There had to be something that was so horrific that would get the attention of his people, and of course the United States was part of this, to help rebuild and, and to see the rebirth of Israel in 1948. And so it's it's been quite uh, truly amazing uh, when, we, when we stop and we think about this prophecy coming together. And again, you can't make this, you can't make this up. And before I move to the next part, I just wanna say this again, because uh, I noticed a lot of people just came on, um, is this that if you don't have an understanding of the nation of Israel and the fact that they're reborn, okay, the prophecy that we're going to get to in next week and the coming weeks as we move to the New Testament and look really to what's happening today uh, in the world, globally speaking, not just in Israel, but, but globally, um, you're always going to say, well, we've heard this forever. You've got to know, and I can't stress it enough, that the rebirth of Israel is is kind of like if you play Monopoly, passing go, the first spot on Monopoly board, that's where the game starts, okay? That go, uh, this the, the credibility of prophecy starts with the nation of Israel and the rebirth, okay? That's why I started here with the series in Ezekiel, all right? And so, um, all right, so we have, uh, we have the um, uh, God uh, bringing forth and regathering his children to the nation of Israel. All right, but this next part I find to be uh, very interesting, referring to Christ as the seed of David. Okay, this, this prophecy is so important. All right, as the Jews are coming back to Israel, as they're realizing that God is their God again, because sin separates us from God, but they repented of that idolatry. And so God is clearly upon the nation of Israel. His hand is upon this nation. It's, it's exciting to see the United States is a part of it now, as we've developed a strong uh, foundation again uh, in Israel's life, as far as po uh, uh, politically, diplomatically, uh, even militarily. And we, of course, were huge in moving our embassy from Tel Aviv as supportive of moving the capital back to Jerusalem in 2017, which was just three years ago. All right. And so uh, verse 24, this is 24 to 28. I'm going to read down through and explain before we get to some more credibility building here as we see things unfold that are completely unprecedented in the world. Okay. Verse 24, this is Ezekiel 37, uh, verse 24. David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my, and observe my statutes and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell there, and their children, and their children's children forever. My servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in their midst forever. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. 
The nations also will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel when my, when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. Okay, now this is huge. This is huge because not only for setting the precedent with the Jewish people and the Messiah, Jesus Christ, but we're going to see later in this prophecy series where the prophet Daniel, as well as John the Apostle, or John the Revelator in the book of Revelation, is going to tell us about a counterfeit to, uh, the, to, to God in his covenant, where the Antichrist is going to make a covenant with Israel, where there's going to be a counterfeit to what is genuine. Okay, and so uh, there's always a counterfeit to truth. All right, there, there's, whether it's money, there's a counterfeit. Uh, whether it's someone um, telling the truth on the witness stand, somebody's going to counter it with a lie and perjure themselves. Okay, that though, there's always a counter to truth, but it's our job to study and know truth so we can recognize the counterfeit. Uh, right away, okay? And so here, Ezekiel is going to declare the truth of God's covenant, and Daniel and John are going to tell us what the counterfeit's going to be, all right? Which is very important, because even now, in 2020, we're seeing the precedent. We're seeing how a new world order, we're seeing how uh, one voice is going to be able to speak to the whole world, just like I'm speaking to you here from my house in Andover, and people are watching all over the country and even a couple abroad right now that are that are watching from, from one from Kenya and one from India, even as I speak right now. Okay, so we see how this is going to unfold. We see how there will be uh, a counterfeit to what um, what what the Bible says and what truth is. Okay, so first uh, is equal thirty seven twenty four. David, my servant, shall be king. That's not referring to King David. That's referring to the son of David, Jesus Christ. This is prophetic to to the Lord. All right. This is why the Messianic Jews who are returning to Israel and many are getting saved, and we have missionaries in Israel that we support, okay, right now that are leading Israelis to Christ to see this prophecy fulfilled, okay, but this is obviously Jesus is going to come back at his second coming and reign from Jerusalem for 1,000 years, the millennial reign of Christ. He's going to come back and bring forth the fact that he is the shepherd of Israel, as well as the Gentiles too, but he certainly is is was a Jew himself, or and and he's going to reign as the shepherd of Israel. All right, but in, this is referring to Jesus, and that the Jewish people will walk in the covenant of God, similar to the the covenant that God gave Moses. He was you know to tell the Hebrew people they were to walk in that. But these folks are going to walk in the gospel. They're going to walk in the life and teaching of Jesus Christ. All right, which is which is so important. And observe those statutes and be real. Why am I saying this is building credibility? Because we see it even happening now in Israel. But we know it's going to transpire, you know, with Christ as we go to the future. All right, it's very important. Jesus and his children win. Okay, God's chosen people. God will protect them and save them, uh, just as he told Abraham uh, back in Genesis chapter 12. All right, so God is, is keeping his promise. Notice that we're talking continued blessing here. Uh, we're con uh, the continuing of the renewal of the Israel and the people of Israel. Okay, and, and they're not in a backslidden state. They're not in a desolate state. All that was taken care of after World War II and the repentance as God cleansed them. That's, that's happened, uh, praise the Lord. All right, and so God's people are going to dwell in the land. God's servant David's going to be their prince forever, uh, praise be to God. All right, he'll make an everlasting covenant, okay, that God's people will be protected and saved, okay? And so this covenant will be carried out. Guys, there has never been a covenant that God made with anyone that he ever broke, okay? Even in Israel or the Hebrew or Israelite, Jew, whatever you want to call them, their disobedience, God still kept his promise to Abraham. He did not let Israel get wiped off the map, even though they led desolate for all those years. He would raise up one enemy to conquer, then he'd raise up another enemy, and the Jewish people were scattered. They were never destroyed, okay? It's just an amazing fact of, of knowledge today. And so as we, 
as we look at this and as we see the blessing and we see the, in history, we use the term booty, not as a sexual derogatory term, but we use it as a, a term for history where there's a cash crop, where there's money to be made, where there's something happening um, and something's happening in Israel. And it's right before our very eye. As I said, fastest growing economy, the population's increasing, um, the military strategy that they have. Uh, obviously, uh, they, they have nuclear weapons with the help of the United States. Um, you know, they are uh, just, it's just amazing what's taking place, but they're also surrounded on all sides by people that want to destroy them, people that want to blow them off the map. For example, the nation of Iran, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second, okay, uh, with an alliance that is now forming um, that we're seeing, which is prophetic of Scripture as a sign of the times, which I'll get to in just just a moment. OK, and so God says he's going to be with his people. He's going to multiply his people. So Israel's population is not only growing because Jews are, are coming back home, if you will, with a homecoming in Israel, but they're they're being fruitful and they're multiplying. OK, uh, Jewish families are going from three or four to seven or eight. Uh, so it's general mathematics here. Okay. Larger families, kind of like what happened in America, uh, during the baby boom generation, uh, 1946 to 1960, where the population just skyrocketed again and people had a lot of children during its wife, hence the baby boom generation. Well, we see that kind of happening, uh, in Israel right now. So the population is increasing, uh, plus people are living longer. So, uh, you know, the population is, 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 is rising rapidly, which is uh, pretty, pretty cool. Okay. And so um, then the Lord speaks of his tabernacle. And of course, that's the Lord Jesus Christ and on the earth um, and his, that God will be their God and that the Israelites will be his people. Okay. And so, uh, and of course too, just to jump really ahead is that new Jerusalem after the millennial reign of Christ, uh, then there's final judgment, uh, and then God, the new heavens and a new earth are created. But the new heaven is actually going to be in the new earth as named New Jerusalem in the midst. So the Father will reign from New Jerusalem, which is pretty cool. Um, and so uh, we'll talk about that uh, in the future. All right, so there we are. We have the finality of chapter 37, okay? And so we see... Um, Again, as Israel goes, so goes the world. We see that Jerusalem is the epicenter of the world. Now, anyone that studied history, okay, which I love history. You guys know I teach history. Uh, I have a degree in history. I, I love, I've always loved the study of history as well as political science. But natural, nationalism is when a country wants to be dominant over a land. And the more land you have, the more dominant it is perceived that you are. Okay, and then you want to imperialize that land. Well, when it comes to Israel, even though it's only the size of New Jersey currently, it's nowhere near the size it was during the, the time of King David, but it's currently about the size of New Jersey, okay, with 10 million people uh, and a rising population and oil and an economy that is booming, okay, but there's going to be, the Bible tells us, there's going to be an alliance of nations that want to nationalize and imperialize Israel, okay, with the motive of, of basically destroying this piece of land, okay? And so God, in his word, he actually names names, okay? And it's very, it's very specific, okay? And any person that, that would take some time and study history or study maps can find out where these nations are. Some of them still have the same biblical name that they had 2,600 years ago when Ezekiel first declared this prophecy. All right. And so what, what's going to happen? There is going to be an alliance called Magog. And Magog is the offspring of Noah's son, Japheth. Okay. And Magog is... Um, an alliance that is along the Black Sea in the Caspian Sea of nations, primarily the nation of Russia. Okay, and I'm going to, uh, once I go through this list uh, and, and just describe briefly, I'm going to flip the camera to my computer and just show you a map, zoom in on the computer so that you can see uh, the map here of Magog, all right, and how significant this is. 
All right. And so Magog's leader is going to be a, a, a name, a title, and called Gog, G O G, which stands for czar or leader. Okay. And Gog is going to be uh, most likely out of the current country of Russia. Okay. And this is just very significant. Okay. Because we're going to see where Magog, this alliance, uh, which was a big part of what used to be the Soviet Union. People ask me all the time, Pastor, why will not, why will Russia not leave Georgia and Ukraine alone? Why does why do they keep imperializing and and nationalizing that area and making it more as part of Russia? Well, it's very simple. They need this land along the the Black Sea. They need this land to bring forth the trade routes to attack Israel from the north. It's very it's it's very simple. Just because Russia is no longer the Soviet Union and occupies this territory, biblical prophecy still has to be carried out. And so uh, you say, well, well, that's that's a hypothetical question. That could be a possibility. Well, let me just share with you the next country. Because this next country is completely and unequivocally unprecedented uh, with an alliance with Russia. All right, and this country, of course, is biblical Persia or modern day Iran. Now, these two nations have despised each other historically. Okay, it's it's kind of like Red Sox fans and Yankee fans, or Browns fans and Steeler fans, okay, or or any type of rivalry. Okay, Persia and Russia have never done anything together. All right. And as I told you last week in the intro, I, I had a professor at St. Mary's College where I went to college as an undergrad uh, in St. Mary City, Maryland. And the uh, professor, Tom Stevens, who told me, he said, Justin, because I talked to him about this way back in uh, the late 1990s. I graduated in 2000. So it would have been the late 1990s. And he said, these two countries will never get along. This will never happen in the, the Bible is mystic. OK, and he was a he was the history chair for St. Mary's College. OK, I'd love to talk to him today because Russia and Iran have a formed an alliance, a strong relationship where Russia is funding uh, Iran and their desire for nuclear weapons. They're giving intelligence uh, along the Mediterranean Sea. Russia is feeding the nation of Iran. Uh, many things, and, and even uh, they've even had press conferences, they've had conversations together, they visited each other. It's all in the media. All you have to do is, 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 is Google Russia and Iran, and thousands of news stories, thousands of pictures will pop up. It, you, can't, you cannot deny this. Okay, so I'm going to read scripture here, and where God names names, and we see these alliances form. All right, but I want to give you the other nations before I do. Okay, so Russia, okay, and part of Russia is, of course, that what used to be the Soviet Union, Georgia, um, the Ukraine, um, then you're going to have Asia Minor, which is current day Turkey, uh, and their significance and, and how, how important uh, that is, a little bit of Syria, and I'm going to show you a map here in just a second, uh, coming down, and you're moving from the north, and you're moving into the south where Israel is, that Again, the Bible tells us in Ezekiel that the attack, the alliance, is going to move from the north toward, through the mountain region, the Golan Heights region, toward the holy city of Jerusalem. And this alliance is going to move in all four directions. Okay, From the west, you're going to have, most believe, Gomer is current day Germany, or at least what is, was East Germany uh, during the Cold War. Um, is the East German region from the west moving down toward Israel across the um, across the Mediterranean Sea and down that th through that region? Uh, then also from the west you have North Africa, the country of Libya, that is going to be moving to the from west to east toward Jerusalem. From the south you have the nation of Ethiopia, which biblically that included what is now the Sudan. And so when you look on a map, you will see Sudan and Ethiopia, they're right beside each other. That's how huge that alliance is going to form uh, from the south. And they're going to travel north into uh, Israel. And then, of course, from the east, moving west, is the nation of Iran, 
Um, and so uh, we're also going to find out, though, that Jordan is going to be uh, uh, somewhat of an ally um, to Israel. But for the most part, the in, in, in Iraq, biblical Babylon is going to stay at a distance for right now because they need to be spared so that there's a place for the Antichrist to reign from. All right. But from the east will come Persia. So Israel has got an, an army of enemies coming in all directions. And I want to share with you in Scripture how we know this. Okay, so if you turn with me to Ezekiel 38, and if you have a question uh, or comment, please write it in the comment section. Good morning to you, Laura. I see where you chimed in. Good morning. So good morning to you. All right, and so good morning, Paula. I see where you chimed in. Uh, praise the Lord. Okay, so the um, Ezekiel 38. All right, and I'm just going to skip around a, f a few verses because I want to give you the, the names of the countries, okay? And so we know who these, these people are, all right? Now, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, G-O-G, and the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, okay? So that is the region of, of Russia, Asia Minor, which is Turkey, uh, all the that whole region along the Caspian Sea. And I'm going to show you a map here in a second. In the Black Sea, that whole region is Magog. Okay. Um, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I'm against you, O God, Prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tabul. I will turn you around and put hooks into your jaws and lead you out with all your army, horses, horsemen, and all splendid clothing, great army with bucklers and shields of, and of all them handling swords. Verse 5, Persia, which is modern-day Iran. Ethiopia still has its name, Ethiopia, and that includes the Sudan. And Libya, which is in North Africa, okay, that's still its current name, Libya, okay, are with them, all of them with the shield of the helmet. Gomer, which most believe is referring to the area of what used to be East Germany, okay, just to the, the, the west of the, the boundary of Magog, um, and Gomer in that region, uh, which was, um, which, which is Germany today, but the eastern half of Germany, east of Berlin, I guess you could say. All right. And so Gomer and all its troops and the house of Togomar, which is in Turkey. Okay. From the far north and all its troops with many people are with you. Okay. And so we have the alliance. We have the, the Magog alliance who's led by Gog, the Russian czar. All right. And we see that these nations, if you Google these nations, you see that their bond is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And if if you know history, even though the Berlin Wall came down, uh, I think it was 1989 uh, when it actually was torn down and the Cold War ended in 1991 when the Soviet Union became Russia, the country of Russia, again, a democracy. And Boris Yeltsin was elected president. Um, we see that Germany, though, there's still many there, many there, uh, children of the Nazis who despise the Jewish people. Uh, Hitler's movement, even though he committed suicide in 1945, the Allied powers won the war, there is still a strong group of people, especially in East Germany, which was the communist side that, that joined forces uh, with uh, Stalin and the communism after the war, okay, and Khrushchev and uh, even right through with Mikhail Gorbachev, uh, that despised the Jewish people, okay? And that, from what I read and the research that I read, is that that alliance is actually getting bigger, not smaller. It's getting stronger. Uh, there are people there uh, that have what's called sleeper cells. I mean, it's just amazing what's going on as we see these things unfold. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the my my camera to my computer here. So just bear with me a second as I do that, and then I'll uh, it'll you will see what I'm talking about hopefully, okay? And I will um, zoom in here, okay? Or zoom in, zoom out. I'll do something. All right. So I'm not sure if my hand can stay still long enough. Maybe if I prop it like that. Okay. So you can see this map. All right, and this is one map. I'm going to show you a second. Okay, this is the area um, that is, if you can follow my finger, here is Russia, the southern part of Russia. Here is Georgia. Uh, up in the right corner is the Caspian Sea to the Black Sea. And Magog 
um, if I was to travel over all the way to the west, actually reaches the, co the, the eastern part of Spain. Okay, but my camera is not quite big enough, and I want you to be able to see this. Okay, and so Magog is this whole region, Turkey, Georgia, uh, moving down uh, through. Um, this is the northern part of Magog. I'm going to show you the other alliances in a second, but they come from the, the, the west and the south. Um, here you can see Iran. This is biblical Persia. Okay. And Jerusalem is down, uh, down in the southern part of Lebanon. I don't have it on this map. It'll be on the next one. Okay. And so, yes, Paula, Armenia is right in there, uh, as well. And this region is going to have biblical proportion. Okay. No doubt about it. This is the way they're going to travel. This is why Russia is not letting Georgia live an independent life as they were supposed to when the Soviet Union folded. Same thing with the Ukraine. Okay. And so they're moving down uh, this way. All right. Now I want to show you this next map. All right. And hopefully, uh, let me zoom in a little bit more. Um, hopefully you can uh, even see this. The star at the bottom, that is the nation of Israel. Okay, and so you can see Gomer, Germany, which is over here to the west, and how they are going to travel uh, along the Mediterranean Sea and attack uh, from the uh, from the west. We now know with ships, Iran actually has ships just off the coast of Israel, even as we speak, and it's even been in the news where the president has recently given orders to shoot uh, Iranian planes. Um, or and take them out if they do anything uh, suspicious. Uh, Libya is coming uh, right here is Libya in North Africa. And this map is not to scale, but Ethiopia is in this box. Uh, Ethiopia is south of Libya, and the Sudan is down in that region, and they're going to attack from the south and move north. Okay, and so you can see where, where the Israel is completely surrounded. And these nations today are fully uh, aligned together. There is, there's no more countries that have to uh, be aligned. These countries are, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, together. Even in the underground, like I said, with East, what was East Germany. Okay, so we know, we know how these, how these pieces are coming uh, together. Uh, but the one that is most unique is Russia and Persia. So when someone says to you, what's a sign of the times? Why is it different now? What's going on? Even, you know, we can certainly, and we will talk about uh, Matthew 24 and, and Jesus's specific instruction, but we can see, and he even talked about wars and rumors of wars and, and things like that, but we can see these alliances forming today that are completely unprecedented, especially with Russia and Iran. Okay, so when someone says that question to you, you can argue very easily that this alliance has been formed, and you can just by a simple study of history know that these guys were rivals. They hated each other for years. They want nothing to do with each other for years. And then God said that at the end times, they would come together and form an alliance as Magog. And we see that happening right now. As of April 26, 2020, these things are unfolding, okay? And so basically, this map tells us that Israel is going to be like the Pee Wee football team against the Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl champions. It's going to appear to be a, a blowout of sorts, okay? And so, but... We're going to find, as I continue to study, teach this morning and the next week, how God is going to save his people. Now, this is significant, guys. As bad as things may get and as bad as things may look, you have to know and believe by faith that God's word is credible and he will not only save his people Israel, but he will save his children. During the tribulation, as well as pre-tribulation, he will protect us. He will save us. We do not have to fear death. God will protect his children, all right? And so, and we, and I'm hoping that you guys, your credibility is increasing as we study this. So I'm going to switch back, okay? And bear with me. I know that's kind of, hopefully that's better. All right, so we are... Um, uh, you know, we are seeing this 
thing, I pray, uh, come alive as we look at um, history as it's unfolding right before our very eye. All right, so there we have Israel surrounded by the enemy on all sides, okay? Israel is surrounded by the enemy on all sides, all right? No place they can run, all right? And we're going to see here um, that ultimately Israel is also going to stand alone, okay? Now, remember, though, God's made a covenant. We just read God's made a covenant with his people that was that has been uh, instituted in 1948 with the rebirth, okay? And so keep that in mind. I would rather have God on my side than all the nations of the world, okay? I would, I would rather be in God's uh, court, if you will, um, with him as my judge and uh, defender than having every nation of the world, okay? I'll take God over all of that. And uh, I, I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to, I don't have time to refer to the scriptures. I'll just tell you. And remember, this is an abridged version of this series because things are happening quickly. And I don't believe we have enough time to do it expository style in one hour on a, per week on Sunday morning. Um, but Israel is going to stand alone. Ezekiel uh, 38 will continue to declare that Israel is going to stand alone. They're not going to have an ally. Again, the Pee Wee football team versus the Chiefs. This is not good. There is no, uh, there is no ally that Israel is going to have. That includes the United States. Okay, so, uh, and we saw a hint of this in the previous administration where America was beginning to pull their hand away from Israel. You guys can research that in the news. Okay, and that changed uh, with President Trump and his support of Israel. But this is an election year. Uh, there are many who are becoming more and more anti-Semitic. Um, you know, who's our next president? Uh, four years, even if Trump is reelected, four years isn't that far away. But the precedent has been set through through the previous president and our policy that maybe the United States is not as supportive of Israel as we once were. And maybe there's political parties that want to shift away from support of Israel. We got a little hint of it. OK, and so. We, we can see where even the United States, uh, just because we helped with the rebirth in 1948 does not mean we'll support them to the end. All right. And so, uh, God is going to, uh, protect his people though. And he's going to begin to bring judgment. Okay. As Magog is attacking Israel, Russia from the north, uh, and, and Gomer coming from the west, uh, Germany coming from the west, Libya coming from the west, uh, uh, Ethiopia coming from the south, Persia, Iran coming from the east, all coming toward the nation. God is going to save his people. Okay, and this is what's cool. I want to share with you how God's going to save his people. As they attack the Holy Land, and we see the alliance forming now, the Bible tells us exactly what the plan is going to be. I just kind of showed you the map. Okay, and I've quickly told you here that Israel is alone. OK, there there there's not nations that are going to basically step up to defend Israel. OK, and we see this. This can happen very quickly. We you know, we were going that direction just four years ago. All right. So um, look at what God himself is going to do. And the reason that God is doesn't permit other alliances uh, with Israel is because God needs to show the people of Israel he will keep this covenant that God will protect his people, and ultimately this brings glory to God. If other nations were supporting Israel, you could always, uh, you can always have, uh, yes, Brandy, I can send you that map. Um, uh, so the uh, other nations could get the credit for bailing out uh, Israel. All right. Well, if there's no if there's no opponent, if there's no partner, who can get the credit? If you stand alone, it's only God. And this is how God's going to do it. I want to finish with this in our remaining uh, seven minutes here. Ezekiel 38. Jump with me down to verse 18. OK, down to verse 18. And it will come to pass at that time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. That's God speaking. My fury is going to show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. 
Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that all the fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. So this earthquake is so this earthquake is going to be felt around uh, the world. Okay, uh, huge, and and of course. Uh, we're going to, with the news and everything that we have and the technology that we have, we're going to be able to study this earthquake quite, it, the man, mankind or humankind is going to uh, take notice. Good morning, Ma. Thank you for watching uh, today. Always good when your mom's watching. All right. And so the uh, continuing on, um, uh, the mountains shall be thrown down, the, the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog, G-O-G. Throughout all my mountains, says the Lord. How is God going to do this? Sends a great earthquake, gets the gets the world's notice, gets the enemy's notice, gets Jerusalem's notice as well. Okay, and so or Israel's notice. All right, how's God going to do this? Every man's sword will be against his brother. So what God's going to do, and He did this also in the Old Testament numerous times, where where an army would start fighting amongst themselves. God would bring confusion. We even saw that uh, during the Exodus story of Moses and the Hebrew people. God will bring confusion, uh, and every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. Now, I found this to be interesting. We're dealing with uh, pestilence uh, even now, even though it, was, it appears to be created out of a, uh, a Chinese lab with uh, working with bats and the virus that, that or, or this pairs where it originated from, but it's a pestilence nonetheless, and a pestilence is a rare disease that can't be understood, that is a complete nuisance, and it's certainly been that here and, and around the world, and especially in America right now, okay? Um, and bloodshed, to mean disease is going to take place, there's going to be bloodshed, and then God says he, he brings the weather into it, I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on many people who are with him. The him there is referring to Gog, G-O-G, the one leading this alliance, as well as the troops of Magog. Remember, Israel's enemies coming from all four sides, okay? God sends an earthquake. He brings about war. They're fighting with themselves. They're killing each other. There's pestilence there. Now he's sending rain uh, on the flooding rain on the troops, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus, I will magnify myself and sanctify or set apart myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Credibility. Remember, as we talked about in the intro, credibility means worthy of belief. Do you believe God can bring about a victory like this when it's one nation, his nation, the nation of Israel, against the world? Well, I believe he absolutely he can. And as we see the characters unfolding, this is almost like a novel or a play or a movie where the audience can see, you know, what's taking place. The main character can't, the good guy can't see what the bad guy is going to do, but the audience sees what's happening. You know, there's going to be a crescendo. Well, we're going to have a crescendo. We're going to have uh, these pieces together. We know the characters. We know how they're going to attack. We know uh, specifically what's going to take place, as well as how God is going to bring the victory. Right when it looks like Israel is going to be destroyed, God and his covenant will be remembered, and he will protect his people. And we know exactly how he's going to do it. All right. Um, and so uh, this, uh, many scholars believe that this could take place during uh, the first part of the second half of the tribulation. Um, some believe it could happen even now. I believe personally, uh, I believe all the pieces are coming together uh, that this could unfold now. Um, no doubt about it, especially since uh, none of these countries are named in the book of Revelation, only Babylon. And, so, and nations of the world, but there's no enemy of Israel, uh, really, that's going to bring about attack. So I believe we can see this now. But the season, okay, of, of the finality of the last days is here upon us, okay? And so only the Father knows, you know, uh, the, the, the exact time. But I can tell you guys, the handwriting is on the wall. Our, redeem, our Redeemer is drawing nigh. We must be looking up. 
We must be looking to the eastern sky, which the sun is coming through my window now. Okay, which is why I moved over to this corner of my office so that you guys could see me and the glare would not be uh, ha would not be on the camera. But we can be looking up that our Redeemer is drawing nigh, and we just have to be ready. Again, I'm going to close with a word of prayer. If you have questions, type them in. Um, I'll answer them after the service today. Uh, we're going to be coming on in 10 minutes with our morning service time of worship, and then going to be looking at today's title of the message is Rejection, Conviction, and Action, uh, and looking at the life of Joseph, explaining those three things. Uh, so come on back, but I'm going to pray, and I pray also that God has spoken to your heart through your word and building your credibility in biblical prophecy. Uh, Father God, I thank you for the men and women that are watching. Uh, I just ask and know, Lord, that your word never returns void. And I pray that we will be looking up for our redemption draweth not. May our hand not be in the cookie jar. For, Lord, you're coming back to see who you will find faithful. And I pray that everyone that is watching will be faithful, Lord God, to you in your statutes. Bless us today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. See you in 10 minutes with our morning service.